Hello, and welcome to Time Between Times Storytelling with me, Owen Staten. Welcome, everyone, to the place where tales are traditionally told. Do not be frightened, for here is a safe place. A place where we can listen to stories about ghosts, about myths, about legends, about great battles of heroic quests, all told at the time between times, the time when it is neither night nor day, but the sun has gone and the sky is grey, the time when the veil between our world and the fairy world grows wafer, wafer thin, so thin that for a few moments we can reach into the fairy realm, and for a few moments they can reach into ours. Now is the time that people see ghosts. Now is the time that people see lights in the sky. Now is the time between times. So relax. Sit at that fire pit, the heart of the forest. Far away you can hear the howl of wolves. Far away you can hear the growl of bears. But you know you are safe here with your friends at the time between times. So let me tell you a tale of adventures from long ago, where fearsome villains were vanquished by great heroes. Come with me to Wales in the Dark Ages, the darkest of ages. There lived a giant called Rita Vaur. He was as tall as ten men, with a great big black beard, and he carried with him an axe an axe that was bigger than a bear. And wherever he went, he caused fear, for he was such a bully. Twenty-seven Welsh kingdoms he had defeated, moving from one to the other and killing their kings and taking their beards and hanging them from his belt. Twenty-seven beards he had, and he would sit on his throne in the middle of North Wales, tucked into the mountains. And any rumour of any new king would send him on a mission once more. But this was the time something happened. This was the time of magic. This was the time of the Brenin Arthur, King Arthur, the great king who carried the sword, Calad Valch, wherever he went, hard lightning, Excalibur, as it was later known. He heard of Rita Maur and all the damage and destruction and death that he was causing in the north of the country. So he went north with some of his knights riding through hill and valley, through forest, over river, over bridge, through gorge, until he came to North Wales with its great mountains that stretched to the sky. He walked into a valley. The cliffs on either side of him almost blotted out the sun. He knew that here, even at the heart of the day, it would be dark. The Bryn in Arthur got off his horse, his armour clanking in the wind, Caladvalch hanging from his belt. He cupped his hands around his mouth and called, Rita Maur! Rita Maur! Come to me, Rita Maur! Come to me if you are not a coward. Come to me and face me, Rita Maur! What followed was silence, just a bird flying in the air, the sound of far away animals scrabbling. The Bryn and Arthur waited until the sun started to set, until the time between times came. Then he turned around to get on his horse. But as he did so, far away, he heard a thumping tread that got closer and closer until it felt like the gods were throwing boulders in the sky. And then stepping over the valley, blotting out the sun and the moon, came Rita Vaur. A cow, the greatest giant in all of Wales. Arthur looked up at this monstrous being and looked at the beards along his belt. Rita stared down at him, then opened his mouth and spoke in a bellow as loud as the loudest echo. 
So you are the king that comes to face me now. I will add your beard to my belt. The breeding Arthur had an idea. And he said, Hold, giant, for you are ten times my size. I fear my beard would be just one more on your belt, but if you can take it from me, you are welcome to it. But stand, for I will bring my blade to fight you. Arthur got down from his horse, walked away from Rita, placing on his armour, picked a dagger from his belt and shaved off his beard until he had a face like a newborn babe. He approached Rita Vaur and said, well, here it is. Here is my beard. Take it and hang it from your belt. It means nothing to me. The great giant did not know what to think. You have come and given me your beard freely. That I have. If there will be peace, what is my vanity as a price for that? Said the great Arthur King. Rita's rage knew no bounds. He opened his mouth and roared, a roar that shook the mountains. He brought out his great battle axe and said, I care not for what you think. I will fight you anyway. And he brought it down hard with a slam. Arthur jumped to the side. Rock and stone spat everywhere. And he just about escaped. And there they fought at the time between times. The mountains stretching to the sky. The stars shining high above. The clash of arms. The great axe of Rita Vaur against Kaladvalch, the sword of Arthur. And they battled long into the night, until Arthur, with his speed and his skill, avoided the great blows of the giant, who started to tire. And at last, when Rita's axe came down with a bang, Arthur leapt up and stabbed him through the heart. The giant fell to the ground, where he landed with such a bang that shook the earth. Arthur jumped back. As the giant fell, the earth started to shake back and forth, and all the rocks from all the mountains surrounding the giant came piling down and landing on top of his huge fetid corpse. What was left was a giant pile of rock that almost touched the sky. Arthur climbed to the top of the pile, until he could see all the way from North Wales to the south. And he called out, Now that I'm king in all these lands, let this place be known as Aruitha, the tomb. For under this great mountain lies the body of the slayer of kings, Rita Maur. But no longer... Will he trouble us? But all who look and see this, the largest mountain in all of Wales, will remember me and the battle that I had with Rita Maur. And so that is why the mountain of Snowdon, Erari, Aruiva, stands to this day a memory of the Brynin Arthur, the Arthur King, and his great battle with the giant Rita Maur. And thank you, my friends, for joining me here again at the Time Between Times. I hope you enjoyed that tale traditionally told. I know the news is full of dark things at the moment, and I have recorded a new podcast, which is a mindful listen. If you go to Time Between Times podcast and listen to the sealed envelope, it's a way to relax and let your mind wander away from all the dark happenings. Join me again at the Time Between Times here at the Fire Pit, where you will be amongst friends. If you like the video, please leave a comment. Please subscribe. Our numbers grow more every day. 
You can email me at owenstaten at aol.com or follow me on Twitter at Owen S. Griffiths. Or if you're feeling really generous, buy me a Kofi at kofi.com forward slash Owen Staten. Thank you for joining me here. Your company is much appreciated as always. Have a good week. Diochenbauer. No star.